Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse, and you're watching the Investor Club Bonus Stories. So remember a while back on the Bonus Stories, I think it was, we talked about Gogoro, mm -hmm. which is a Taiwanese company. Um, they're the ones that do the battery swaps. And they are going through a SPAC right now with Poema Global Holdings Corp. Uh, you can find it at PPGH as a ticker symbol. Um, I had said that I invested a small amount in it to kind of keep track of it. And then I thought there was a pretty good opportunity here. I wanted to go into some more information we found out about it um, because I do think that unlike a lot of the EV startups right now, which are having trouble scaling and so forth, this is a company that not only has scaled already, um, but is now partnering. So let me tell you about this. So Gogoro is Taiwanese. And that's, first of all, important uh, because it's not a Chinese company. Unless China takes over Taiwan, it's a Taiwanese company. So they're working with two Chinese companies now. Uh, these are e-scooter companies, Yadia and DCJ. Now, this is the first time that Gagoro has worked with companies outside of Taiwan. And what makes this a big deal is that China is the biggest e-scooter market in the world with over 300 million e-scooters on the road as of this moment. Whoa. Whoa. Is that true? 300 million? Yeah. I mean, that counts pretty much anything with two wheels and a motor. So I don't know how true it is when it comes to like the scooter that we're thinking of right now, which is like a Vespa kind of scooter. I think we're also talking those, you know, Lime scooters. Okay. I, but basically that's, motorized scooters. That's still amazing. It is amazing. And I haven't fact checked that number completely. So keep that with a grain of salt. But Yadia is the biggest e-scooter maker in the world, even though I hadn't heard of them before. Mm -hmm. And DCJ is the biggest gas-powered two-wheeler maker in China. So two humongous companies. Uh, DCJ is now unveiling its first electric model scooter, which will be available in 2022. So they have a prototype. It will be ready for mass production in 2022. This is a big deal because this is a gas-powered scooter company that now gets it. Like, gets it. We ha you know, we have to go electric. Um, so this new battery swapping brand, this partnership between these three brands of Gogoro, Yadia and DCJ is going to be called Wan Wan. And the thing to keep in mind here is that Gagoro has done hundreds of millions of battery swaps. And why do you think that's important? Well, I mean, it's one of the only companies in the world that actually has a battery swap system that you can pull up on your little e-moped, pull the battery out, pop it into a slot, pull out another battery, pop it into your bike, and ride away. Because here's a point I want to talk about. Many of us don't have these bikes yet, and so it may not. You may not focus on this point. Uh, we recently got a Segway C80, which has a big battery, very similar in size to this. You can pull it out and go charge it. But one of the things I think most of us think about when we're buying a unit like a scooter is the battery. We think like, how long will it last? Mm -hmm. How many charges will I get out of it? What if I wanted a bigger battery? Like what, what if, if I, battery tech changes? Or what if I left it outside and it got ruined? Right, if it freezes. And so if you take the battery out of the equation, so if the battery's not really something to think about. In fact, what if you bought the scooter with no battery in it? Right. Which you can now do. You could subscribe to Juan Juan and lower the price of getting into an e-scooter because now you're like, I bought an e-scooter without a battery. And everyone's like, you're an idiot. And then you're like, no, I'm not because I lease my battery and I'm on a subscription. Um, that's pretty smart. Right. It, it completely changes the way. Well, I mean, it's kind of like going back to a gas car. You're like, I bought a car. And then they're like, so, oh, it's going to drive forever? No, man, I got to go to the place and I got to fill it up every every week. And you're like, aren't you an idiot for doing that? But it's like, not, well, no, everyone did this for right. like decades and decades of we're like, oh, well, it's okay. I just pay as I go. And well, I mean, and, the, and that's kind of the point I'm making about having done the battery swaps for hundreds of millions of times already. It's like they've built out, let's say, a gas station network mm -hmm. and they've proven that it can work. Because if you and I started a battery swap company and let's say we came up with this cabinet that looks like theirs, it has batteries in it. Um, first of all, do we know where to put it? I like, remember years ago, we looked at something like this and I was like, okay, <laughs> that looks, that looks great. Um, but is it going to, is it going to actually work? Right. I mean, not only does it, you know, we have to find the right locations. We have to come up with an app that works reliably. We have to make sure that our algorithm works because this is in the physical world. We can't with an app fix it that, oh, there's no batteries at that location. <laughs> we have to know that, oh, if we put this battery swap thing here, it'll get enough batteries coming back to it at the right times and we'll have enough time to, to charge it. We now need power to that unit, a lot of power to make sure that we keep all the batteries charged. Like there's so many questions here yeah. that Gogoro has figured out. And right. that I think is huge because if we did a startup and we're like, we're, we're a battery swapping company, mm -hmm. again, it can sound great on paper, but until you've actually done it, wh what have you done? 
Right. So that's a huge thing to me. And the subscription plan, I think, is huge because now the scooter companies get it. They're like, oh, great. We don't have to worry about the whole battery part. We can worry about just making the scooters and the motors and all that stuff. You worry about the subscription plan. Awesome. But if you think about it, good girls, I think getting the better end of the deal because there's no maintenance that they have to worry about on the scooters and you have to keep your subscription up or right. else you can't ride your scooter. <laughs> it It's it's really interesting. And if you don't like I here's the problem that I see that for a lot of people, you're going to go, yeah, but I don't I don't ride an e-moped and, and I haven't seen one outside of like, oh, you can rent one, you know, by the minute, you know, in, in the city center or something. Go um, open up Google Maps, take the little yellow guy, uh, drop him somewhere in Indonesia. I know mm. you don't think about Indonesia that much. It's a freaking massive country, yeah. both population and landmass. And we don't even think about it because it's just like a meh, it's like a weird brush stroke on the way down to Australia. Um, millions of people live there. They basically all drive little motorcycles. Let's talk about another country that begins with I, India. <laughs> I mean, if you could make this work, which you can in India, you've just solved a huge environmental problem and you've just made people happy. Because here's the thing. We think about electric cars and we think about a charging station being a destination, right? I got to, okay, I'm going to stop there for lunch or I'm mm -hmm. going to stop there for 20 minutes. No, no, no. Swapping takes seconds. Right. So if you're on the way to the dentist, all you have to do is make sure that you swing by a charging station, pull up for a second, bloop, 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 bloop move on. And that I think is what we're not kind of grasping yet. Even I haven't grasped it. I kind of thought like, oh, you stop here. No, you don't really stop. I mean, it's just for a few seconds. So right. as yeah. long as they put them in the right locations, now as a driver, you're like, charging is no longer an issue. Right. And, and the range can be much smaller. The batteries can be much smaller, so they can be easier to be produced. And the other thing is too, this doesn't work for full size electric vehicles. This right. doesn't work for your Tesla right. Model 3. This doesn't work for, I, I don't care how many companies want to say, oh, battery swaps is the way to do it. I know that Elon had a presentation on it. That that like was very specific, had to do with a like a, that Israeli company. Right, and he dropped it. Yeah, they, I mean, don't, they don't do it. Right. right. Um, it's not as feasible for uh, electric like cars because the batteries are so big. Right. You can't just take the battery out of your car and just be like, okay, let me just, like your hands would be crushed. That well, you can't lift a battery. And like let's that. talk about how much energy you need at one of these stations compared to what you would need at like a Tesla, you know, battery station or a Neo station. Now let's forget about that for a second. Let's just talk about the fact that China is introducing reforms. They have been for years and they're hoping to retire 250 million ICE vehicles by 2025. 2025 is only around the corner. Right. This is why these Chinese e-scooter companies are jumping into this because they need to fit the requirements within years. And this is the quickest way for them to do it. Right. And what I really like about this market is that because things are just a little bit less complicated, you're designing a scooter, not a car, right. um, that you can take, you know, platforms and, and ideas and merge them and move them a lot easier than if you're trying to do all of this like in a car. And I think a girl could have a great first mover advantage here because now that they've partnered with two really big Chinese companies, if you're the third or fourth or fifth company to come along and go, oh, battery swaps, I don't want to work with Gagoro, though. We'll do it ourselves. You're probably going to be faced with the same problem that Tesla's competitors are, which is we have to build a Tesla supercharging network, which, as Rivian is finding out, is not easy to do. You're probably better off just going, oh, Gagoro, can you just license us and we'll put some more money in the kitty so that you can add some more charging stations? Right. And Gagoro is going to be happy to do it. Exactly. So Wan Wan's first battery swapping networks will roll out in the city of Huangzhou, um, which is located in southeastern China. And according to Yadia and Gagoro, you could even go purchase one of these new Yadia PBG models in Huangzhou today if you want. So basically this is happening fast, Chinese fast. So we're <laughs> going to be able to actually see like if it's working probably before the SPAC is completed. Right Now my thought here and what I've been doing, again, we're not financial experts, we're not financial advisors, go do your own research. What we're doing is we have bought stock in Poema, which is the SPAC holding company. This is before Gagoro kind of hits the market. My feeling is that all of this good publicity they're getting now is ramping up for when they SPAC. Probably the reason they're doing this now before the SPAC is so that they can show some numbers when they're actually going public to say like, we've done this many battery swaps, yada, yada. Really good publicity in my opinion. When they finally do the, the first day of official trading, I think you're going to see a lot of news stories about it because 
it will be, you know, Gagoro that will be, you know, traded. And it's not a Chinese company. Now, why is that a big deal to me? Well, you've seen a lot of negative press about Chinese companies recently for good reason. Uh, the Chinese government basically has control over those companies. And so you're betting on not only the companies, but you're betting on the Chinese government, which is scary. Um, here, yes, there's a risk. I mean, Taiwan could be taken over by China. Don't think that's going to happen. Um, but it's more of a Western company. Well, and this makes me question, do you think that when this becomes more popular in China, could this spread to the Western world? A lot of people in our investor club, they like being able to touch the things. Mm -hmm. They like being able to use the stuff. Um, and, you know, it's hard to invest in something that's far away. It's sure. hard to invest in like, oh, well, I'm sure that'll work in China, even though I've never been to China. I've never even been, you know, further west of, than California. This goes back to a problem I think a lot of investors have. And I think this problem came about because of Peter Lynch at Fidelity years ago. Famous uh, investor uh, kind of spread the story and the book was like, hey, if you have actually used this product, you should think about investing in it. He talked about like, you know, if you came across a pair of pantyhose that you liked and, you know, wow, no one else knows about it. I'll invest in this company. Not a bad idea. And we do that with Tesla. And we do that with Tesla. <laughs> a so, lot. <laughs> so I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to put something against if you've use something. But the world is big and we aren't able to touch everything. And that's why we're talking about this company, which is, you know, around the world for most people. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in it. Now, it would be nice, I suppose, if you were able to test out an actual test ride on a Gagoro thing, blah, blah, blah. But what's so nice about the internet is you could do a little research yourself and see like, I'm sure there's a bazillion YouTube videos on people that do it. You could get a firsthand kind of glimpse at, did it work for those users? And then you wouldn't be out. Um, what I mean is, do you want to be the last person to invest in something? And so that's kind of why we're bringing this to you. Not saying you should invest in it. That's up to you to decide. But saying this is a thing that's out there that we are investing in that, you know, could potentially be pretty big. Because if you wait till it comes to Europe or you wait till it comes to the United States, well, maybe it's already become huge in, you know, Asia, India and so forth. And by the time you get to it, the company is already huge and you have less of a chance to make money. This is kind of unheard of in the West. And so what if Gagoro does become the next big thing in China and then moves on to the West and, and you were into it early? And that's kind of what I look for is these early investments that have a big upside potential. Is there downside? Sure, it could fail. But we all kind of know here watching this channel that electric's going to make it. Mm -hmm. The question is, will battery swap be a thing? I mean, you might argue, okay, well, you know, 10, 20 years from now, there'll be some kind of new high-tech battery that'll be this big and you won't need to. Yeah, that's totally possible. So I'm not saying you should hold this company forever. But I do think in the next 10 years, this is, could be a huge market. Totally. Oh, I mean, I'm totally like pretty much sold. Um, and just another thing we talk about a lot on this channel is this is a SPAC. It typically can go one of a couple ways. Uh, it's at roughly $10 a share, as many SPACs are before they actually merge. When it goes public, they'll be press usually. If they've done a good job, which they appear to be doing, the stock should shoot up as people are like, this is the next big thing since sliced bread. Shoots up to usually 20 or 30. Then there's usually the honeymoon period is over and it slumps back as everyone's like, this didn't go to the moon like I thought it would. It's not like uh, crypto. Um drops back for no apparent reason. It was just hyped too much. Then everyone loses interest. It usually dips down below $10 a share for some reason. That's another chance to get into it if you want to wait. Um, and during that, if you do get in now at say $10 and it goes up to two, 20 or 30, that's a good opportunity to just get out if you want to and make two to three X on a very short period of time. Do I know it'll do that? No, I, I have no idea what's going to happen when it finally goes public. It could just go out with a, you know, a little, little bang and nothing really happens. But if it doesn't do that, if it doesn't go to 20 or 30, you can still hold and wait for whatever some, you know, big announcement is or wait till it just starts growing like a normal company would. So there's lots of possibilities here. You can either be in it for the long haul. You can be in it for the short haul. We're just bringing this to your attention. I think it's a pretty cool spec, even though a lot of these specs lately have not been great ideas. We hope you got some great information out of that. We hope it was valuable. Go do your research. Please feed that research back into the Slack so that we can all benefit from it. Because if you find some cool video that finds some problem with Gagoro or finds out how awesome it is, share that with everyone here so that we can all benefit from it. That's the whole point. We're trying to help each other make better decisions as investors. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.